and welcome to part two. Part two, not one, not three, not five, not seven. Part two. Part and I am blessed to meet the amazing Blossom. I've seen Blossom on TV, but there's so much more to Blossom than what TV showed. So this is part <laughs> two. Love, Daddy, and this is how we oh, do do what we don't do, what we shall do, people. We are here with the beautiful Blossom. Part two, because we got from the year naught to the year 20 in part one. Now we're going to start part two off on the year 20, when Blossom <laughs> was in a, a bad place with her beautiful young baby. And let, us take, let Blossom take over. Thank you, Blossom. So I had to get with that. <laughs> you are a star. Yes, hey. you are. You're a star. He's a star. He is. His name's Champ. I've had him years. We love you. He's more, more loyal than most people. I tell you what, I sleep with him on my shoulder every single night. That shows you you're a genuine kind Seriously? soul. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, this is how I, I show people. I don't care. Yeah. I might be 50. That's why his legs are a bit thin, because yeah. I always have him like that on my shoulder. Well, he's a lucky man. And then man. I have that one. Across this shoulder, oh. so they take over my bed and I'm, <laughs> I'm on the floor. They, I bet they know a lot of stories. They do. Well, we want to know your story. Thank you. Look, we, wait, ask him again. We want to know your story. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Shh. We're with Blossom Brown, star of many TV shows, and Blossom is basically going to tell us her life from the age of twenty towards more now. Because when we last joined Blossom. She was in a place, where was you at the age of 20 with your baby? I was in a hostel. Okay, and where was that hostel? Homeless hostel, in Oxford. O Oxford? Because I'm Oxford born. So, yeah. what, what happened to you at the age of 20? What, what happened to you at age 21, 22, 23? Well, I'll be honest, when I managed to have the baby. Yeah. And at first I was reluctant because I got remarried to Kevin, who we're still good friends. As you can tell, I bet that's it now. <laughs> pause. Pause. Right, that's it. That's pause. Thank pause. you. We are doing a documentary right now, so right excuse now. us. Excuse we can't me. take any phone calls at this moment. Yes. Ring back later. So this is this is Blossom story. Before we come to the why and the who and the what, we're right. at the age of Blossom twenty. So where was your age twenty? You was in Oxford. In the homeless. And how long was you there for? About a year and a half. Okay, and what, yeah. what happened in that year and a half? And well, I'll be honest, it, it was difficult, because yeah. like I said, but I think what kept me going is the fact that I had the baby, and I knew, obviously, he wasn't coming back, and that really, cut, that was hard to deal with when you love someone. And what someone. was your baby's name? Emma. Emma. Yeah. I'll be honest, she married an Asian guy okay. and changed her name, but my four, I've got five grandchildren yep. and four of them are half Asian, yep. but he's Asian, but I'll be honest, I'm not sure what's going on with their marriage at the moment. How about when you was 21 then and, and, and my... i tell you what, when yeah. I was 21, yep. I didn't, didn't, I mean, I knew Kevin, my second husband, since I was 14. Okay. He was five years older than me, he was 19. Yes. Nothing... That way went on, no, and I didn't look at him and think, "Oh, I'm going to get with you when I'm older." No, it just happened like that. It just happened. Just went, you know. You obviously trusted him, yeah, and you knew him. Yeah, but, so that helped. But I tell you what, I'll be honest. Those wishes about him, cause, yeah, because because he had like half of his stomach, this half of his stomach, yeah, where he fell into a coal fire, and he was actually light, and he went into a coma when he was two, yeah, and people, he, it caused him to have a stutter really bad. Yeah. And everyone you say, why do you want to marry someone with a big burn mark and a stutter? I said, look, I'm not marrying his stutter, I'm not marrying his burn mark, I'm marrying him, I'm yeah. being with him, because yeah. he took on my first child yeah. when I, we were 21 when we got together, yeah. and he was so good with her, and he was so, he used to work. That's why you married him. And I married him. It's not about that. what someone looks like, yeah. it's about how they are. And I'll tell you what, I have People need him. to overcome that. Yeah, and I, 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 didn't, Damn look right. at, I didn't look at his stomach. No. And think, I always stutter, his stammer or stutter, what a, you know, it's yeah. bad when I met him, but I loved him. Well, that's, that is, and he that's took perfect. My first child, that just shows the sort of person I you are. I loved him for who he was. I didn't Good. care. Good. I, know, I know, okay, I'll be honest, he'd been in, not through bad things, yeah. not murder, nothing bad like that, yeah. but he'd been in that prison for petty things. Like, I've been to prison I mean? for petty no, things. No, literally, in and Doesn't out. Doesn't make me a bad person, right? You know right? what? Yeah. 
I said to Kevin, when we got married, I said, will you promise me one thing? Yeah. He said, of course I will. I said, I don't care, because my auntie was going, oh, should be, I said, look, just because yeah. he, he's not, he ain't murdered no one. Yeah. People do things that they, you know, and they've learned by their mistakes. He ain't a murderer. He's no. done things wrong. Yeah. He's holding his hands up. He's done his time. Fair play. You know. It shows he's a genuine I person. Him. I love him. I said, I can't Good have my wife falling up with. Anyway, I married him. So you were 21 this. when you married him? Yeah. And did you have kids together? Yeah, we had three. Wow. Yeah. Well, he took them, I'll be honest, I had a child so before. life was good at the age yeah. of 20, yeah. 21. After yeah. you got out of the hostel. Yeah. And, when, and where did you, did you leave Oxford then or stay no, there? No, I stayed in Oxford. So, so, for how long? Well, near enough to I was about, I've been here in Brighton nearly 10 years now. Okay, so try and talk yeah. me over what happened. Age 21, 22, 23, 24. Well, 20, What's the story? I was, from about 21 yep. to I was near enough 39, nearly 40, yep. we were like married. So you were they happy years? Yeah. So yeah. from the age of 20 to 40, you yeah. were married? Yeah, happy. You had three children yeah. with Kevin, plus you had one from before. Yeah, so no, got, I had two from before. So you got five children but, overall? Yeah, well, I had five, but well, seven pregnancies, but yeah. I lost three out of seven. So you got four so that I got are alive? four that are alive. My so that's oldest, tragedy, you've lost three of your children? Yeah. That's so sad, sorry. The, I'll be honest, what really hurt me and yeah. I, I'm going to hold my hands up. Yeah. I didn't have the tattoos on my face for attention. It makes them want to cry. You had them for your children? I had them because I lost the baby. In two. This is why I've got this tattoo here. It says Jessica, Holly, Sean Brown. I had that, this. So before you look at Blossom and judge her, and my she had daughter. these tattoos on her face and her arm for her children that she lost. And you should not Jessica. be judging. You shouldn't be judging Blossom for how she looks today. You should be asking Blossom, why does she look like this? And why has she got these tattoos on I'll her face? I'll tell you the truth, right? And she's telling you right now. I'll tell you, I, I don't care who I say it to, because I'll say it as it is. Good. People that know me, like yourself, yes. and people in Oxford that know me, yep. or, or anybody that knows me personally, know that yep. I will tell the truth. I say it as it is, on or off camera. That's why we love you. If I cry, I, I cry on camera. If I don't cry, yeah. or if I laugh, okay, I admit, the, yeah. my downfall is sometimes when I get riled up, I do tend to swear a lot. And it's not right. But it's I'm just because you're emotional, you, know, you feel so, it. like, hacked off yeah. with, like, people judging me. And I think, I'm not happy. I can't they need to know your story it, before yeah. they judge you. That's what makes me like. How angry. about you know Blossom's you know story I mean? before you judge Blossom? How about you true. ask Blossom why she's got tattoos on her face for her children now. that have passed away? You want to hear Blossom's story? I tell you what, it makes me feel emotional. Hmm. And I don't normally, but her name is Jessica, right? Yes. And I lost her, like, because I've got a bicornated uterus. It's in, in That's Life magazine, the story. Yeah. You know, which. Be honest, I, I had to feel yeah. at, my, at a late stage in my pregnancy because yeah. she got trapped. I didn't know until I went for my scan. Yeah. And it was difficult because they said she's not going to survive. And I turned around and I said to the doctors, let her survive yeah. and let me die. I said, I, they said, you we can't to give up your own life. Yeah. I would have sacrificed my own life. And they said, we can't do that for three reasons. I said, why? Give me the reasons. I said, it's yeah. my choice. Yeah. They said, no, we can't do that. Yeah. We, and they was nearly in tears. So I said, why can't you do that? She's got yeah. a right to live. You they said, yeah, but the problem is, um, Blossom, if, even, cause, you know, even if we, like, because she was trapped and her head had blown up, she was a normal, healthy little girl. I've got the autopsy report in my in yeah. there, actually. Yeah. And... It was like she was hemorrhaging in the brain, still inside me, and I had to go in that day, and I felt her dying inside me, and I was crying to my husband, going like this, rubbing my stomach, going, put in the nurses, I goes, help, help me, please. Well, you've been I said, Karen, tragedy. please, I said, and they, goes, and they come in, it's really weird, I don't know how I knew. Yes. I, I didn't know, but they put that, you know, the way they put the thing over your stomach? Yep. Two midwives done it, she just went. I'll stand, scan. Oh my God, she goes. I goes, what's up? I said, she's gone. Have you given birth in the toilet? I said, no. I said, she's gone. Like that. And they goes, gone where? I said, hey, she said, she's not in the scene. Where's she gone? And she goes, don't worry about it. You knew her soul had gone. Yeah. It's like a wave of... Ladies and gentlemen, the story you're hearing you know, is true. Right? And it is Blossoms. And she's lost three of her seven children. And she's been through things that we cannot even understand. So I how about people get off a of Blossoms case? 
hear her story and just, you know, give her the respect she deserves, as I do, as we all should. Because there's so many sides to each story, but this is Blossom's side of her own story. And this is part two of Blossom's story. And we're going to come back to part three in a little while. We just need a bit of time to breathe and take in the air. We love you, Blossom. <laughs> Camera. We're going to come back to part like three shot, in a little while. Did, no, it's beautiful. You, you did, I'll be honest, it was tough. It was so... I can see. To, to, it's like knowing that she was dying and I'm t feeling like a volcano dying and carry that my daughter dead in me for four days and give birth on a labour ward and not know if my... I was blessed by the vicar. How old was you when this happened? Well, 37. I didn't have the tattoos. On. I had tattoos. Yeah, but, but not on your face. I had longer hair down here, beautiful, like wavy. It was yeah. black hair. Yep. And I had a little bit of eyeliner and a little tiny bit of lipstick and this orange coat on and yeah. no tattoos at all on my face. And I'm not using it as an excuse because of my dead child. But it, I never got offered counselling. I never got offered any help. Any support, and um, I had to do it all on my own. You should have been offered counselling. You yeah, should have been no, offered support. Nothing. You should have been. And I was so gutted. I thought I got. And I had to. They said, "Do you want me to bury your child?" And I said, "No, thank you." I said, "Me, and my my husband, will bury our own daughter." But his face. I can remember his face looking over my shoulder, going like that. And I had to get rid of that picture because it was just so yeah. emotional for him. I could see it. I thought, well, "What can I do?" I feel. Really bad. What could, I felt bad for him. What could other women that have been through this or, or going through this, what could you say to them to maybe show them there's other people that have been in this situation? What well, I'll be honest. My, yes. One woman, she said to me, how can you say it was a baby? And I didn't lose my rag because I thought, that's what they want me to do. I'm yeah. not going to bite to them. I don't have to. I'll explain. Emotions and anger are so yeah. close together. Yeah, I had to be really careful. Yeah. So I said, have you ever had a child? Yeah. No. I said, I'm a mother of four already. Yeah. I've lost two babies. This is my third baby. But how can you say it's a baby? I said, she was a baby. I said, I'm, when I had my scans, I see her heart beating. I Oof. felt her moving around. I said, how can you? I felt her dying me. I said, how can you say she wasn't a baby? Her name is Jessica. She's got a name. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I had tattoos, like I said, since the age of 20. I've got this one up here from my first husband, Martin. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I'll be honest, I'm not using her as an excuse to have tattoos right. on my face, but the only, if it weren't for these tattoos as they sell on my face, I'd have been, when I didn't have these, my other four kids, I was seriously, seriously a thought of, you know what I mean, killing myself. Ladies and gentlemen, this is part it's two of me. Blossom's story. It's saved my life. We're going to come back to part three, because we've heard about the tragedy of her children, we've heard about when she lived in Oxford from the age of 0 to 40 now. When we come back, we're going to start with part three of Blossom's story. I just want to say thank you to Blossom for sharing this with me and my friends. But I tell you the truth, I want thank to share you. it because if I can help, even you just are helping one others. Person, you are, you are. And if they ever need any support, yep. any help, any comfort, they can they can inbox me on Facebook. They can ring me if they want. Perfect. You know, and I I would help them because I've been there. I've walked, you know, people that have walked in my thing, yeah. and people do need help, they do need counselling, they do need support, but unfortunately I didn't get that. But you're willing but to I'm give willing that to others? Because I've been through it, Good. and I've, I've been through so much, and it's made me a stronger, better person for it. Good. And I'll tell you what it, I learned when I lost the baby, yeah. I learned how to properly love people. I, I did love people anyway, yes. don't get me wrong, but I learned that feeling you get in your heart yeah, gotcha. what real love is it's not until you lose a parent Blossom is willing to help anyone who's that. going through these similar problems if you just or message Blossom Brown man. she is there to help and this is part two of Blossom's story Everybody I am Danny Sluggett and I'm going to come back to this when we come to part three Amen thank you Blossom Amen Amen